very warm welcome to everybody. Um, I think whoever you are and, and whatever you do as an individual or as an organization or indeed a country, that there are just occasionally in your life those moments which change your direction of travel. Um, life often goes along on a steady curve and then at various moments it changes. In my own life, when I left the UK in 1995 to move to Vietnam, that was one of those moments when, on a professional and personal level, life changed. Um, it's almost exactly 28 years ago to the day that the Berlin Wall fell. There are these moments when things change, and they're driven by many things. They're driven by complex environments. They're driven often by technology. They're driven by communities, communities coming together to say, this can't go on, we've got to change something. That's what happened in HIV. But most importantly, they're driven by people. They're driven by people who come together and say, enough's enough. And the challenge that we're facing cannot continue on that straight line. We have to shift the line. And often you look at those moments in history, in your own life, or as a country, or as an organization, and you say to yourself, it was obvious. It was easy. I was a junior doctor during the start of the HIV epidemic, and it was not easy. We look back now and we say, well, it was obvious, it was easy. It, it was not easy. Living in Berlin in 1989 was not easy, I imagine, to break down the wall. And the most important thing, I think, for those of us who are in the sorts of roles that everybody in this room is in, is to be ahead of history and not look back in retrospect and say that was the moment, because that won't do it. You have to realize you're in the moment. You have to realize that the curve can change and that you can change that curve. And we need to also remember that now has to be the moment because the threat of drug resistance, not the threat, but the reality of drug resistance is here today. We can't afford to wait to allow that curve just to keep going. We have to shift the inflection point. And we often talk about antibiotics, but actually this applies more broadly than that. Of course it applies to antibiotics, neonatal sepsis, adult sepsis, sexually transmitted diseases. There is an epidemic, a, a, epidemic at the moment in Southeast Asia of drug-resistant malaria, which threatens all the advances in malaria over the last 20 years. And if that reaches Africa, it will change the na nature of the endemic transmission of malaria in Africa. We are at one of those moments, and it's the duty of all of us to shift that curve. And we need to seize it. And yesterday we heard that actually the lessons from history don't necessarily apply because as I said, people look back and say it was easy. In fact, I think the lessons do apply because all of those things I've mentioned actually were driven in the end by people who said enough is enough. And those people, not exclusively, but those people are in this room. And of course, we need to bring in other people from the outside and diplomacy is crucial and making sure nobody is left behind is absolutely fundamental. Access and equitable access must be at the heart of everything we do. But bringing everybody together doesn't mean waiting for everybody to move, because movement requires people to say we're going to change something. And that requires leadership, it requires vision, and it requires some people to say, I'm going to do it, and I'm going to hold myself to account. Because then when you do that and you measure it, and it's great to see Chris Murray talking later on the metrics of this and bringing it into the global burden of disease, that's hugely important. Because if we hold ourselves to account, we have to be able to measure it and we have to show to people that we've made that difference. And I think if I would like anything to come out of this really important conference, we should remember the three words in the title, the call to action. It is about action. Because many of us have spoken about this for a long time now. This is the time to shift that curve upwards. And what we should do, in my belief, coming out of this meeting is give the Interagency Coordination Group, the true mandate, they already have the mandate, but if all of us could put aside some of our differences, appreciate what we will all contribute, and we will all contribute something differently, then I believe the IAGCG needs to seize that moment, 
spend the next 18 months leading the world and all of us get behind it and give it all of our support. Because the stars are aligned to make this difference because it's all driven by people. If you look at all the leading people leading industry, it's great to have Paul Stoffels here. If you look at people leading the regulatory agencies, they're ready to move and want to make this happen. If you look at the successes of Carbex, of Guard P, of GHIT in Japan, of the Indian government, of having Ghana and Thailand alongside the UK at this meeting, then it is bringing the world together and now we need to shift. So my only message from this morning is remember what it says on the tin, call to action. Let's focus on the action. Let's focus on accountability. Let's hold ourselves to account for making that difference. And when we come back here in a year's time, let's bring back the success stories because nothing helps moving things forward than success. Everybody wants to be part of success. And so others will join if we can demonstrate that the curve is shifting. So thank you very much for joining us. Particularly thank the partners from Ghana, from Thailand, from the UK government, and pay tribute to Sally Davis's leadership in this for many, many years, and the United Nations Foundation. So thank you much for joining us. Let's make this the moment that we change the curve. Thank you. <laughs>